Radio, it's 1050. That's 10 minutes before 11. So if you need to be somewhere by 11 o'clock, you got to be thinking about heading out of the house or uh, feeding the kid in the car. Traffic jam section. If you're going to get there on time. We uh, try to end the first hour with a little se- segment that I like to call Cripe. Come on. You've got to be kidding me. These are expressions that I use throughout the week when I run into things that make me say Cripe or come on. You've got to be kidding me with that one on. And we're reminded that we live in a world that's made up of things that don't go the way we want them to. And we're living in a world that's full of things that make us say cripes and come on. And you've got to be kidding me. But we have choices to make. We don't have to be those people. We don't have to live only with those. We can also live in a world of things that are right on, that are the way they're supposed to be. So if we recognize the cripes and the come ons and the you've got to be kidding me, we say to ourselves, let's make a better world. Let's make the world that we want to live in. Why not? Six things are the source of issues. So... The cripes this week, you know, I like to throw myself in this mix because I think, you know, I'm a, quite a cripe maker myself. I got this motorcycle, and I was really thrilled about getting this motorcycle, and I'm really happy about getting this motorcycle, and I, and I went over and I, and I worked out a little, you know, a little, little deal, and I had a little trade and all this stuff, and I, and I go over with my motorcycle, and I'm rolling it up onto my trailer that I own on the back of uh, the vehicle, and it's kind of big, and the person said, hey, would you like a little help with that? And I said, I'll let you know if I need some help. Well, that's problem number one, right, <laughs> you know. Yeah, I'll, I'll let you know if I need some help. Mm-hmm. Yeah, apparently I need some help. So anyway, I'm pushing <laughs> it up onto the... As you're pulling the on motorcycle. <laughs> onto the trailer. And I got it, I don't know, almost all the way. The back wheel just had to come up over the lip of the trailer to sort of ride up on the on the top. And I gave it one last little heave, and my shin mm-hmm. touched the <laughs> tailpipe that was still hot. Mm-hmm. And it burned me. And that made me pull my leg away, which made me lose control. So I dropped the bike to the right <laughs> and snapped the turn indicator off the front of the bike. Oh, God. Like, uh, you know, uh, loading it up. Mm. Cripes. I mean, unbelievable. So then I got to go order a, order a piece, and then I got to you know, go take it apart. And now, now you know, the first day I have my bike, I'm supposed to be out enjoying it, and I'm working on it. And it's broken junk there. And it's bro- it's just, a bro- yeah. just a broken piece of junk. Yeah. It's going to be for sale on Craigslist. And and by the way, the Craig no, I'm keeping this story. I got to say, the Craigslist people, you earned the, uh, the 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 second cripe today. Okay, people on Craigslist, when you're going to put an ad on there, and you you decide that it's really important, and you and you work up your ad, either be prepared to answer your telephone or to look at your email. I I was looking at ads for motorcycles on Wednesday and Thursday. And this morning, I'm still getting calls back and emails back from people. Oh, yeah, about that motorcycle you called about? I'm like, seriously? <laughs> Two days ago. It was a long time ago. I don't know. I, I guess some people on, the, on that whole Craigslist thing just don't have the same sense of urgency as the guy who's hunting down a bike ad. So, cripes to myself. All right, here's the come on. The come on goes out to Bobby Jindal. Bobby Jindal, as you know, is the governor of Louisiana. And he signed a law into effect this week, giving the right for people to carry guns in church buildings and mosques and synagogues, specifically stating that any limitation to gun carrying rights are not in effect in churches, synagogues, and mosques. All right, I don't want to get into the whole thing that I got into this week with people who want to talk about gun safety and they want to talk about the right to bear arms, and they want to talk about the fact that the uh, United States not um, supporting one particular religion clause actually has something to do with the Second Amendment. You know, it's just downright ridiculous that you have to make a special statement, and if you be full-on, hardcore advocates of guns everywhere we can find them, because that's our Second Amendment right, want to go out of their way to say, hey, churches, you can't stop guns from being in your building. Because, you know, in Minnesota, there's people that have these churches that have these lawsuits that say churches shouldn't have to put up a sign that says guns are banned on this premises. It -hmm. should just be the given that when you come together into a religious ceremony, it's a gun-free zone. It's a gun-free zone, like a school. Nope. Nope. Not (laughs) in Louisiana. Carry your guns. Because, you know, we haven't had a good gun shooting in a church in a while, have we? It's been a few months. I mean, it's just... Pack in heat for when you're going to church. And what really bugs me about it, especially as a religious person, is I know that this is comes together because people are blending together 
their civic religion with their Christian religion, and they're blending the two of them together, and they want to say, we have a God-given right to kill young. And then they're and you know, there's no place that you can be given more of that God-given right than in church. It's just, it, it, it's so maddening to me. I mean, when, when these, these right-wing advocates become the super crazies in a bit, and they're now, th- there's, there's no sort of reasonable restraint. Of course you shouldn't be passing a law. I, it's just, it's, it's just, I know you can call me, 952 946 you can, you can tweet me over there at Pad Ram Theory. You can jump on Facebook, and you can remind me again about our civic right. And, and, how, kill and how about an improved sermon at church row? Oh. <laughs> yeah, packed in heat. And, and not only can you carry it, you can carry it as a concealed weapon mm. in churches. Uh, it's just, it seems that it should be one of those places that you can say, oh, come on. Come on. Can't we, can, can't we say because of the fact that we have a, a nursery here? Couldn't you make that like Sunday school, like a school <laughs> zone, so that you don't have to carry weaponry into your into your, your worship? Because the last thing we need is more religious people packing heat. I mean, not that there are any worse than non-religious people packing heat. <laughs> that might even be worse. I, I don't know. It just doesn't make any sense to me. And the, and the, and the you got to be kidding me. You got to be kidding me. Goes along with it. Here's a you got to be kidding me news story from the day. It comes out of boring Oregon. <laughs> they would say it Oregon, but that's because we're too bored over there. Here's the story. Phyllis Owens apparently didn't know night from day when she died at 87 years old, an hour after a sheriff's deputy closed in on her as she reached for a handgun, an officer said on Friday. This poor woman, the story goes on to say, basically suffers from dementia. She didn't know it was daytime or nighttime. She came out when a guy was working in her yard with a, with a, with a, a, a front load digger, you know, front back, backhoe kind of thing. Front end row with a backhoe. And she says to the guy, what are you doing here at 2.30 in the morning? He thought it was the middle of the night. She has a gun in her hand, waving it at this guy, a woman with dementia who's lost control of what's going on. She pins him up against his backhoe and says to him, you know, like, I'm going to shoot you. Because, you know, it's her God-given right to carry a gun. Mm-hmm. So she's got a gun on this guy, and she calls the police, and the police come, and they, she's now on her porch, and she doesn't know if it's day or night. She's kind of lost you know, touch with what's going on. And she reaches for her gun again when the police are coming out because she doesn't know that they're the police. She reaches for a gun. They shoot her with a stun gun, one of those electric mm-hmm. ones. Causes her to have a heart attack, and she dies at 87. you got to be kidding me. Mm. you got to be kidding me. I mean, the, the whole thing is full of you got to be kidding me. Why this poor woman has to get by her all by herself when she's struggling with dementia? You gotta be kidding me on that. Why she's got a gun that she's waving around? Well, she's probably having a church meeting when you're, you know, <laughs> when she gets there, she's gonna have a you know. So the cripes goes out to the people like me that can't even, you know, just throw their motorcycle greens without busting a thing. And Bobby Jindal, nice law. And the come on, you gotta be kidding me. Goes out to this poor woman who suffered fatally, not only her dementia, but from her bad choice. Let's make a world that's not full of that kind of stuff. Let's make a world that we want to live in. It's the kind of world we don't have to say, Cripes, come on, you got to be kidding me. We'll talk about that after this. Big Buzzer Radio on AM 960.